What's up guys? We've been doing a lot of AI illusions lately. In the past few weeks, we've done in this video a illusion-based AI technique within Stable Diffusion where we could create wonderful shapes and images hidden within other images. Definitely check that out if you haven't yet. And last week, we've tried to incorporate shapes all kinds of different shapes, but also letters, text, hidden text within images, subliminal text, if you will, where you could also create funky but powerful effects in terms of art and marketing. And of course, a few months back earlier in the summer, we also used a similar technique to create fantastic logos for companies or for yourself using line art and these basic background images. And that was in this video. Now we're gonna take it up a notch and we're going to combine these to create animations with this base image layer. In other words, we're going to have these subliminal messages, subliminal text, subliminal shapes that determine how the image looks, but it will be animated this time around. And you could create fantastic non-static images that you could use on a website, on your app, or just as a piece of art again. So let's do this. Now for this technique, we're going to actually use Deforum within Stable Diffusion. And as base layers, I'm going to try to use the same base layers we used the last time in our last video so we can make some sort of comparison. So we used these concentric circles. Uh, we used some letters I typed, such as I love Zelda and other things I'm gonna show you here. So as you can see in this image we've created, we have in the background, I love Zelda written. And this was done just now by D Forum. I'm gonna show you how. And you can see already, if you squint, that the whole sentence is, is back here. I love Zelda, right? So first you're gonna open D Forum. You're going to put your stable diffusion checkpoint or model, then you're going to go to control net. In control net, once we enable control net, we're going to put pixel perfect, if you have a good GPU, overwrite input frames. In the preprocessor, we're going to leave it empty. And in models, we're gonna use, once again, the control QR code model, the QR code monster model we've used in the past two videos. The rest of it, uh, as far as the weight schedule, uh, this again has to do with how much of your background picture, so either the shape or the letters, talking about how much you want them to show. Sometimes you might want them to be a lot more subtle, and sometimes you're gonna want them to show a lot. So this here is going to be something you play around with as far as the weight goes. I put 0.8, you can go up to two if you'd like. And then we got the, the beginning and the end, the last, the, the ending control step and the starting control step. And these, of course, also depend on when you want the background picture that you put to enter the scene. So I don't like to have it at zero because I like the scene to start getting created and then to insert the letters or the shape to start appearing afterwards. But usually that delay is very short in, the, in my case. In this case, it's 0.05. And then the ending step can either be the last step or it can be just before the last step if you want the image to wrap up around your shape. Now, in the case that you want your image to get created within the shape, like we've done in the last video, in our last video, in that case, you might want to have much higher weight schedule, a starting control step that starts at literally zero and ending that ends at one. Now, the most important thing here is to add your video file under control net input video. That's the video file. Just like in the previous video, we used the shape that's going to be used by control net. In this case, that shape is a video, but it can be a static video, meaning you can make a video out of the shape. You can also use image and I'll show you how but I like to use video. So you're gonna have to transform your static image into a video and I'll show you how to do that in a minute after we finish the details of the setup here because we're not gonna be going back to it. Now we're going to go to run and in run, you're going to use the sampler method of your choosing. The steps, I usually leave them at 25. Otherwise it takes too long, but obviously if you want something a lot more detailed, you might wanna go with, with a bit higher, depending also on the sampler you chose. The width and the height is also up to you. Now in keyframes, I put the cadence at one and the max frames at 150. This can also be up to you. Now, when it comes to zoom, normally on the zoom part, you have some long string and this, of course, you can play around with, but personally, I just leave it at zero. I don't want the picture to move at all. I just want to change while being static. So I put one because one means no movement. But if you want the image to move around, obviously you can change the input. Next, we go to prompt. For the sake of this tutorial, I left extremely basic. I just put Zelda Hyrule 
and it stays like that until the end. And it starts, as you can see, at zero, which means at frame zero, it already starts at being Zelda Hyrule. If your video is longer, let's say you make a video that's like three, four minutes, you could change the image that you get at every step. So you could start it at zero saying Zelda Hyrule, then you could have, let's say 20. So at frame 20, it changes into Link on a horse. Then at 50, you could say Link jumping or however you want your video to develop. Now in the init, we're going to go to video init because we're initializing with a video as i told you earlier you can also initialize with an image but if you want to initialize with a video then you go to video in it and you put once again the link to the video where it's located on your pc and then in hybrid video we're going to put the following hybrid composite is after generation we're going to check the generation input uncheck the rest hybrid motion is going to be optical flow the flow method will be fern back consistency mask blur at two comp mask type we're going to put video depth and comp mask equalize we'll leave it at none and that's about all you're going to change here and besides that you're just going to run generate after that you're just going to play with the values a little bit depending on the results you get and what the re what results you want to want to have but it's mostly going to stay as is except one thing you have to remember is always to update with the new image if you're changing your base image you want to update like in this case we used love the word love instead of i love zelda that we had earlier and as you can see it generated it where at first it's a little village and then slowly the word appears here in the background. And it's part of the image, of course, as, as always. Now you can make it more protrudent. You can make it appear more or less based on the control net values that we talked about, which is the weight schedule. That's probably the most important because that's telling it how much you want it to show. And then the starting step and the ending step. And as you can see, the effects can be quite cool. Now you can make the word appear later or immediately from the start. And the way you're going to do that is the following. We're going to go to a website called onlineconverter.com. I'm going to leave everything in the description. As always, you're going to select the image that we were talking about. So let's say, a word that you wrote or a shape, let's say the concentric circles. I'm gonna show you the results of that in a second. We're going to choose the image that you want, your base image. Music you can add if you want to, I never did. You're gonna put the duration of the video. So it's going to be pretty much a static video. And let's say we put it at 10 seconds. And then you're going to put the effect, if you want an effect. So if you want an effect, and I chose it to appear gradually later on, I think it's a cooler effect. And the way you do that is using one of these effects. So to create your base image. So I loaded my base image, the word love, and I chose the effect smooth up. And for this effect, I put eight seconds. And this is the effect I got. So if I like the effect, then I can load this image, the file location on your PC, and you paste it in two places. One of them is control net and the other one is the in the init, which is up here, video init path. And this will give you this effect where it appears later on. You could even make it move up and down. You could zoom in, go sideways. All the effects that you saw on that website, you could use. Here we've made it much more subtle, which is what I was telling you earlier. You can still see the love message in the background, but it's far more subtle and you got to really focus or squint to see it so how much of it shows is going to be up to you here the i love zelda appears much more clearly we put too much emphasis on the letters so they literally wrote the whole letter is which is something you also can do if it's something that you prefer here the letters ai appear in time as the video runs here we got the concentric shapes that are getting created but that come afterwards also so it initially creates this cyberpunk street and then brings out the background image and builds around it. Here's another example. So we've used these examples in the last video we did to completely different effects, but this time they're animated, right? So again, in this case, we've asked it to start off with the shape and not bring it out later on, but start with it right away. And as you can see, that might be a better effect in this specific case. So it all depends what you're trying to build. Now, another very interesting thing that we could do besides having these static shapes that we just did is actually have a moving shape in the background that's going to lead in which direction the video is going. So you would have a generally static canvas, but then you have a shape that appears out of nowhere and the forum is going to draw on that shape while that shape is moving. I thought about making something with these stains, with these patterns and see what we could create using that. I was surprised on how good these effects can be. It reminded me of the beginning of a movie series or how they make these, these end credit videos. Let me show you what I'm talking about. What I did in this case is 
is take a stain animation, like I said, you can download any, you can even create them in Blender or any other software, basically any moving shape that you'd like. But I use these to get this effect from, from movies and I'm gonna show you how it works. So right here, you can see Batman and with this stain starting to grow and within the stain, and the stain takes over the image and changes Batman's face as it advances. You can ignore the Shutterstock uh, text here, but it's just to give you an idea on how it works. And you see how he evolves because of that wave that comes onto him, the stain wave, as it spreads, it's actually changing the image. So it gives you this amazing cinematic effect that I think is absolutely wonderful. So in this case, it was done exactly like the other ones, except that I used this one as my input video. And of course I changed the prompt to something like Batman in Gotham City, something very simple. Here's another one that I tried where I used, I believe a slightly different uh, stain. So this one didn't spread all the way. It spread only halfway through. So it created like a different sort of Batman, which also gives a cool effect. This, this is yet another one where you have two stains from the side and as they're splashing, they're drawing the image as you can see here. And I think the, the effects are absolutely awesome. There's a lot you can do with this. In this case, it was something like uh, New York City, I believe. Very, I used very simple prompts just as a test. Here we used also the same kind of technique, but this time using a different splash effect that we downloaded to give this effect with Zelda. And it's very cinematic. I absolutely love these. So as we can see here, there are so many ways to animate these illusion effects that we've been doing for the past few days. And this one is only using the forum. I have ideas for other things I might be showing you in the coming days and weeks. But for now, you should definitely fiddle around with this uh, the forum technique and try to find interesting shapes or perhaps build them yourself in Blender to create fantastic effects, cinematic effects, introductions to your own videos, splash screens of all sorts, and very cool art that you can come up with. If you enjoyed this video, do leave a like and we got a lot of stuff coming up, so stay tuned.